You got yourself a front seat to something you're not going to forget so quick. See that hill? You'll see it light up like you never saw light before. Any minute now, they're going to test an atomic bomb. for the Atomic Energy Commission. They're going to build a plant here. Grandpa, am I doing all right? Just fine. In three months, this place will be a boom town. Sure, there'll be problems, but there'll be advantages for every one of us. No wonder the world is confused. Many of us are afraid. So far in this film, you've seen demonstrations of atomic energy at work as a force for good in industry and agriculture. Now we go on to a more dramatic use of this God-given force. This girl is suffering from one of mankind's most dread diseases, cancer. She has cancer of the thyroid gland. A few years ago, this would have meant her case was hopeless. Now she has a chance. That glass looks like it has plain water in it, but actually it contains hope hope in the form of a radioactive iodine solution. Now, most people know that iodine is used in treating thyroid, but let's explain where this radioactive business comes in. You could hear a ticking in her throat. In the same way, a little bit of atomic energy in the solution she drank is now sending out signals from her throat. These signals are being picked up by the apparatus suspended over her neck and so provide a new and tremendously valuable guide to the doctor in his efforts to help the girl. Now take a look at this instrument. It doesn't seem very interesting, but believe it or not, you're seeing a bunch of atoms drawing their own picture. Every tick of a radioactive atom causes a pin in the instrument to jiggle as it passes over the chart. Let's see it in action. This gentleman may have cancer of the thyroid gland. He's drinking the same kind of iodine solution the young lady drank. And just as it did in her case, the iodine concentrates in the cancer tissue. Then the atoms go to work and draw their own picture. And so the doctor has a record of the exact location of the cancer, which he could obtain in no other way. Another use of atomic energy as a tracer is in brain surgery. The work is being done in the use of radiophosphorus for the detection and exact location of brain tumors. And the accuracy of the information that this new method supplies is leading to revolutionary results. Already several cases of brain tumor, hitherto considered hopeless, have been successfully operated on with the aid of this great new tool of medicine. Medical research is just one of the many uses of atomic energy as a benefit. Sure. Don't you want to contribute to the future? <laughs> Now you're needling me about the resolution. Of course I am. That's what I'm here for. Good night, Congressman. Radio phosphorus is a tracer. Tell me more about that. Well, there's a surgeon in Boston using it with some kind of a Geiger counter to locate the exact spot of the brain tumor. Mm. Has it been successful? Of course, it's all very new, but he's already had results in cases that seem to be hopeless. Mr. Vernon, do you have some personal interest in this? Yes, my grandchild. The little girl you saw this afternoon. She's dying of a brain tumor. Do you have this surgeon's address? Sure. Of course, you realize it's only a chance. I know. But this morning, there was no chance at all. You've got to make up your own minds on the whole picture. But I've got this to say. Because of atomic research, there's a chance now for my granddaughter. What's even more important is a better chance for children like her in the future. That is, if we don't put obstacles in the way of atomic research. Energy, because I thought it was the work of the devil. Now I know I was wrong. You see, God made the atom. 
You've seen a little of the good it can bring, and its promise for the future of the world. That's how high the stakes are, for good or for evil. But this time, God has entrusted us with a physical force bigger than we've ever had before.